Next on Worcester News Tonight, the Worcester Police Athletic League is providing kids with safe forms of recreation during the summer months. Tonight, they took to the boxing ring. Plus, a surprise visitor in a Barry family's front yard. Mass Wildlife is warning residents to be aware of bears. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Worcester's East Park transformed into a boxing arena tonight, but it wasn't professionals lacing up their gloves. It was kids from Worcester. For years, the Worcester Police Athletic League has been providing the youth with safe forms of recreation during the summer months. Our Cam Jandro was there tonight and has the details. Worcester's youth battle it out in the boxing ring Tuesday. It's part of the Worcester Police Department's PAL program. We were the first outdoor boxing event that they could remember in Massachusetts. So we're very proud of that. For police, this is the only type of fighting they want to see. Earlier this year, the department announced a 13% drop in youth arrests since the Youth Violence Prevention Initiative started in 2015. Programs like the PAL Boxing Club offer kids a safe place to be. Some of these kids never get in the ring, but they're part of our boxing. And uh, we're there for them. We'll help them out with any issues they have, along with the Boys and Girls Club. It's been a great partnership for us, and it builds the relationship and the bonds. Local nonprofit Planting the Seed Foundation assists families and children in need of resources. They provided funding for equipment for Tuesday night's fight card. They can get some training, they get some life skills, uh, get them interacting with other people. It's really great for them, but also to have it throughout the summer months when they're not going to school every day. Sergeant Stephen Roach has been organizing the event for more than a decade. He says it gives himself and fellow officers a chance to step away from the job and help the youth. We see tragedy, we see negative things. This is a positive thing that we get to see. It's almost a break from some of the other things that we have to deal with, unfortunately. To give back to the, to the organizations that were so good to me and such a big influence on my life growing up, kept me out of trouble, kept me busy in the summer. Now, Chief Stephen Sargent is a product of the Worcester Boys and Girls Club, and he says events like this really hit home for him. The department has been having these outdoor boxing matches for about the last decade, and they say they hope it's a tradition they can continue for years to come. In Worcester, I'm Kim Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. With summer around the corner, a Worcester City Councilor wants to help young people travel around the city. Councilor Sarai Rivera has requested City Manager Edward Augustus provide the council with a report concerning the status of the W program by the WRTA, which would provide people ages 8 through 24 unlimited rides during the summer months for free. Rivera says the hope is the free rides would create more lasting young riders on the WRTA and get them to any summer jobs or activities throughout the city. Number one, we have a lot of really awesome activities happening for youth. Um, but there is an issue regarding where, how to get to and from these activities. So that would provide them opportunity to be able to get to their jobs, to get to all the youth activities that are really positive activities in the neighborhood. Second would be part of the issue with the RTA is that we don't have enough riders because unfortunately we don't have a really good system. So this would introduce probably a whole generation of people. That WRTA says they are looking at ways to... Rivera says she wants to discuss how to get the Uber generation to start realizing the WRTA is a viable option for travel. The largest celebration in the state commemorating American Legion's 100 years of service will be held here in central Massachusetts this weekend. The American Legion Post 138 in Spencer is hosting the centennial event. The American Legion began in 1919 after World War I to support wounded comrades, honor the fallen, help surviving spouses and orphans, and protect the democracy they fought for. Post Commander John Canty says a lot of things have developed from the American Legion over the years, including pushing for the GI Bill of Rights for soldiers and sailors coming out of World War II, establishing the Department of Veterans Affairs, and putting in place laws to respect the flag. Canty says this weekend they want anyone who served in any capacity to be recognized. And it's probably come into more significance recently because we've lost a few of those people that were hope, we were hoping to be part of this program. A couple of uh, World, War II, uh, World War II vets have just recently passed. We currently have a current uh, Korean War veteran, veteran that's uh, got terminal cancer. So it's even more so now, I think. 
Teddy Roosevelt, the fourth grandson of Teddy Roosevelt Jr., who was a founding father of the American Legion, will be a guest speaker at the event. The Grand Parade will begin at 9.30 a.m. and the celebration will follow at the Spencer Fairgrounds. A Barry resident is warning others to be aware of bears in their neighborhood. The 16 year old had a close encounter with a black bear cub, but says they both quickly ran in opposite directions. Mass Wildlife says black bears are common in the state, and this is the most active time of the year. Our Chandler Walsh has that story. Rebecca Saarinen was looking for her keychain when she had a close encounter with a black bear cub. I was like bent over and then when I stood up, I kind of heard its paws. Just feet away from the animal, the 16 year old backed away slowly and ran. Holy crap, holy crap. I kind of knew that they were more scared of us than they were than I was of them. She handled it very well, remain calm, back away slowly and then create distance between yourself and the animal. The Saarinens have caught bears on camera multiple times this spring. Barry police say it's not unusual for the town, but they have seen an increase in bear sightings the past few years. Barry's a pretty good sized town. It's about 45 square miles and we've had reports in every single square mile. I mean, they're all over the place. They're warning residents to remove any food sources like bird feeders. Mass Wildlife estimates there are at least 5,000 bears in the state this year. Biologist Dave Waddles says their population is rapidly increasing and June is the month when they're most active. They need to gain all the food and all the calories they can when they're active, so they're really driven by food. So anytime they can feed at a bird feeder, garbage, or some other easy food source, they're going to take advantage of that. Waddles says black bears aren't aggressive animals. He says to give them space and to not surprise them. At the Saarinens, the cub's mother was in the backyard during the close encounter. Rebecca's dad is happy everyone is safe and says things could have been different. If the mother bear had seen how close the cub was to my daughter, it would have been a much worse outcome um, because obviously mother bears are so protective of their cubs. Mass Wildlife says not to put bird feeders back up until winter. They'll soon conduct a new study using genetics to get a better count on the black bear population. At Mass Wildlife, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester police officer was released from the hospital last week and is recovering from severe injuries following a car crash. The officer was released Friday and is doing better. Police say a driver ran a stop sign at the intersection of Grove and Chester Streets Tuesday afternoon, causing a three car crash. The officer was in an unmarked cruiser. He suffered several injuries, including a severe eye injury. It's unclear whether anyone is facing charges in the crash. One murder charge has now been dismissed in the so-called Blackstone House of Horrors trial. Erica Murray still faces one charge of second-degree murder. The defense argued that the prosecution had not met its burden of proof on at least one of the char murder charges, and the judge agreed. Erica Murray was facing two counts of second-degree murder for two of the three sets of infant remains found in her home. Prosecutors had argued that two of the infants were born alive, in part because they were found diapered and clothed. But the defense argued Murray only admitted one of the dead infants was born alive, and the prosecution didn't prove that the other one ever lived. Here's some of the exchange in court after the defense moved for the judge to issue a required finding of not guilty. There was insufficient evidence to establish that more than one baby was born alive. There's ample evidence to find that Erica Murray caused the death of her children with malice. The Commonwealth has not met its burden as to that indictment. And so as to count two, the motion for required finding is allowed. Murray still faces one charge of second degree murder as well as various other charges. The state's newly regulated cannabis industry is rapidly growing. The Worcester Business Journal hosted a conference today to talk about the several opportunities local entrepreneurs and businesses can take advantage of. Some may still have a lot of questions, and today's panelists help them answer it. People in Worcester in Massachusetts voted to legalize recreational marijuana in 2016, and some say it's positive for the state, while others are concerned about the rapid growth of the cannabis industry here. A conference at the DCU Center Tuesday talked about the business of cannabis. Its goal was to educate people interested in cannabis trends and opportunities in Massachusetts. The Worcester Business Journal hosted the event and says the industry is expected to generate $1 billion by its second year. The Cannabis Control Commission says businesses in Massachusetts need to look into the future because other states are legalizing and there will be more competition. 
we're in a wild time right now. We are in the business of regulating a product that is illegal on the federal level, illegal in many places internationally, legal in some places, quasi-legal in others. It's a very confusing state of play. So to make this a sustainable industry, we not only have to plan for the current strange dichotomous environment that we're in, but we have to look forward to a uh, environment that is going to be different legally. The Cannabis Control Commission will move their headquarters to Worcester's Union Station later this year. A new poll shows a majority of Massachusetts voters believe state education funding should be distributed better to eliminate inequalities among public school districts. The Suffolk University and Boston Globe poll reports a majority would be willing to pay more in state taxes to achieve this. 60% of the registered voters polled last week said public K-12 education isn't adequately funded in Massachusetts. The Worcester Public Schools hired a lawyer last week to consider the possibility of suing the state over inadequate funding. Worcester DPW employees are honored at tonight's Red Sox game for their quick action to help save the life of a child who was hit by a car last month. The three-year-old child was in a stroller being pushed by her grandmother on Chandler Street when a car hit the crosswalk pole and the stroller. The workers jumped into action to help free the child. They were greeted with a round of applause as they stepped onto the field at Fenway. 